Hey brothers and sisters, this is Brother Patrick again. I just made a video about Psalm 24. Jesus is the King of Glory. And the Lord has refined the mission and a better clarifying Bible verse of what's the mission of the Church of the Firstborn. The online church that the Lord gave me uh, the name of and to start in the last few months that we're getting started. The link is below here. You can have prayer. Um, people can submit prayer requests. People can be on the prayer teams. Also, brothers and sisters, I'm glad I started this. I guess I need to make a different video. Hey, I'm asking those who want to be prayer warriors, message me your email. By email. Do it by email. Go to my email, which is on this video, near to Christ at AOL.com. Send me your request to be on the prayer team, and I will forward it to Sister Elaine, who is doing the website. And uh, if I know you, or if I don't know you, then introduce yourself to me through email. Let's talk a little bit See if you're gonna, you know, be on the prayer team. I want to make sure that whoever's on the prayer team, you know, is 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 a serious, mature Christian. That's all. Uh, you don't have to. Nobody has to be perfect, but that you know, you're a serious person who's gonna pray, and uh, you know, just let's just pray about it. There's many of you who have already talked to me about it. Of course, I already know you through messaging, and some of you I met in person. Anyway, brothers and sisters, I always should make separate videos. Anyway. I just made a video about the King of Glory and preparing the way of the Lord. You know, for the rapture of the church. Preparing the bride to be spotless, okay? And before that happens, the Lord wants to send a revival. There's going to be a quick revival. I've been talking about this before, okay? I spent half my time trying to answer people who's calculating rapture dates. Um, you know, praise God. We've got to push forward and let's get those last souls into the kingdom. Jesus said that, you know, this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached to all nations, and then the end shall come. You know, and Jesus said, when the fullness of the Gentiles has come, then it'll be time for, the, you know, for uh, his return. So we need to fulfill that mission. That's why the Lord gave me the title of the book. It's pretty long, you know. It's uh, a final boarding call, and then the subtitle is Satan's Plan for the Ages. Okay, tribute, you know, cum accumulating, accumulating with the Antichrist in the, you know, the end times. Uh, from, you know, the Garden of Eden all the way to the end times uh, with the Antichrist. Our last, and our last mission. People don't, you know, they keep thinking about, oh, I want to be raptured. And then, and then there's the other people that think, oh, we need to go through the tribulation so we can become purified. As if, you know, the grace of the Lord by faith through grace is not enough. They need some special beat down so they can go to heaven. So I guess all the other people that lived before the tribulation who died in the last 2,000 years who were Christians are not worthy to go to heaven because they didn't suffer tribulation. You know, I even had someone whose, uh, you know, whose mental capacity was so bad, you know, what's the modern day PC word? What is it? Uh, intellectually challenged or whatever. They said when Jesus said, in this life you will have tribulation, but, you know, but I have overcome the world. They translated that to mean the tribulation. Well, that would mean that all people that ever lived as Christians would have to live in the tribulation. Well, we already know that thousand, you know, 2,000 years people have died that didn't go through the tribulation. So when Jesus said you will have tribulation, he didn't mean the tribulation. You'll just have problems in your life, turmoil and tribulation, right? Very, okay, brothers and sisters. Anyway, so we need to prepare the way of the Lord, and we need to prepare the bride. We, the bride, must be prepared to meet the Lord, and we must prepare those who are the lost sheep. We must be used by the Lord as his instruments to go out and get the lost sheep, not just me. I am not the only one. I cannot do it myself. That's the problem with most churches. They expect the pastor to do everything. When it's clearly proven through statistics, it, I think it's 70%, maybe it's higher than that. It's at least 70% of all people who get saved are saved through a friend who is a Christian, not through an evangelistic crusade or through something they saw on TV. 70% are one through their friends. Okay? Number two, as I mentioned before, only 2% of people tithe. Now, we aren't required to tithe in the New Testament, but it is a guide. Jesus said, with the same measure you give, it'll be given back to you. you know, he who sows sparingly will reap sparingly. So uh, if you give, it'll be given unto you in good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Will men give into your bosom? That's what the Lord Jesus Christ said. And the New Testament also says God loves a cheerful giver. So it takes money. It takes prayer. It takes people. It takes studying. It takes praying. It takes seeking the Lord. It takes all of those things. And it's not a, a one-man show. Most churches, modern-day churches, are a one-man show 
But God didn't intend that to be. As a matter of fact, the original churches were house churches. Read through the New Testament where it says, you know, the church that meets in Chloe's house, the church that meets, you know, in, um, um, what is it, Priscilla and Aquila's house. All this, they people met in houses. There's nothing in the New Testament about building a sanctuary, building a, a temple and all this stuff. That, that all of these churches use those texts to get people to donate to build a big building. When that same money could have went, you know, to, uh, to feed you know, homeless children in the Philippines and, and, and build orphanages and, and give Bibles to pastors and shoes. I know lots of pastors that don't even have any shoes. I've given my shoes away. I don't know how many times. I keep giving away my shoes, even my flip-flops. Most people in the Philippines wear flip-flops. I'm, I'm giving them away all the time. i got to keep buying new ones because I run into people that don't have any. I mean, those are just the things that's part of life in this world that doesn't revolve around your little Facebook bubble. There's a real world out there with real people with real problems. And that's what God has called Christians to do. To worship Him, give glory to His name, and minister to the, His people, and of course, to seek and to save the lost. That's Jesus' primary mission until the, to the end times, is He came to seek and to save the lost, that which was lost. Those, mankind was lost in the Garden of Eden when Adam and Eve chose by their free will to disobey God. So that's what I'm trying to tell you. Wake up. That's really what the purpose of my channel is. To get people to wake up, get up, pray up, pack up, look up, because we're going up. And go out and do the will of God in your life. Now, if you need to go preach, go preach. There's several people who try to go be preachers on YouTube and in this world who got in car to be preachers. And that's really where all this mess of all this false doctrine is coming on YouTube from people who who got saved last week, and the next thing you know, they're one of the two witnesses. You know, they're, they're one of the 144,000, and they're coming on YouTube to correct people. You know, and, tell, and everybody's going to hell but them. That's, that's a lot of people. God may have called you. There's tons of you who are business people. God's called you to build an orphanage in the Philippines or, you know, give away a thousand Bibles. I know someone, there's a sister and brother right here in Louisiana. They give away free Bibles. They have a business. And, and, two, and they have two branches, and they have free Bibles there for anybody that wants them. And people get them and take them. You know, they were surprised that people would take them. Just things like that. That's what people are called to do. Give away Bibles. You know, go, you know, go talk to your neighbors. Go talk to your relatives. Whatever the Lord has called you to do, do it now. I, you know, I can't emphasize that enough. The day is coming when there will be no more time for you because the Lord will suddenly appear the king of glory will suddenly appear and there will suddenly be a shout. The Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout in the voice of the archangel and the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first and those of us who are alive and remain shall be caught up together to meet them in the air. So shall we forever be with the Lord. That is the rapture. The Lord will shout. He'll say, just like he did with Lazarus, just like the two witnesses in Revelation chapter 11, we see the same thing. We see John... John chapter or uh, John said Revelation chapter four verse one. He heard the same thing that the two witnesses heard. Come up here. We see the the Lord calling Lazarus by name. Lazarus, come forth. And I'm telling you, when the rapture happens, this is what you're going to hear. Like my name is Patrick. You're going to hear. Pa I'm going to hear Patrick. Come up here. There's a list of the people that asked me to pray for them. Stephanie, come up here. April, Vicky, uh, Ellie, Sam, Ginger, Kathy. Liz, Rocky, Lucy, Shelby, Roy, Texine, Lisa Marie, or Maria, Amy, David, another Amy, Rosemary, um, Jay Lee, uh, Carola, Lucy, Wendy, Brandy, Sophia, Joshua, Alicia, Sherry, Anna, Holly, Mark, Michael, Stanley, Kayla, Zimmerman, Eyes, Kayanda, uh, Kayanda Brooke, uh, Sammy, Linda, Karen, Sue, Johnny, Mark, Steph, Robin, Ricky, Andre, Melanie. These are the names of the people who asked me to give them a word. I'll give you another word right now. Get ready to meet the Lord in the air. And the Lord's going to call all those names. You will hear your name come up here. There ain't never going to be no sweeter words that you're ever going to hear in your life. When you hear a sound like many waters, the sound of a voice like many waters saying, Stephanie, or Patrick, all those names, Lucy, um, Roy, Brother Roy, come up here. And th that is going to be the most awesome 
voice, the awesome sound, the most sweetest thing you've ever heard. And your whole life is going to be that moment. We've got to be ready. It's all about that time when we're going to see the Lord. It's not all, and, and let me just back this up. It's not about people. God calls us, our mission is to bring glory to his name. Now, God's primary purpose for us is to be conformed to the image of Christ. How does he do that? Through people, to have us deal with people that nobody can love, only a mama can love. God has us deal with those people who are the worst, the most evil, wicked, whatever, selfish, jerks that you can think of. That is where God gets his glory when somebody like that gets saved. I mean, you know, I was a bad person, you know, I mean, just like anybody else. I was, you know, God saved me. God brought glory to his name by saving me. He's going to bring glory to his name by saving those last people. He's really going to bring glory to his name when the rapture happens. And then his ultimate glory will be when the Lord Jesus Christ returns and he will destroy the Antichrist and the false prophet and those who are destroying the earth with this two-edged sword that's coming out of his mouth. He's going to speak the word and they will be destroyed by the brightness of his appearing and the word of his mouth. Just like when he created this world, yes, Jesus Christ was the one who spoke. God the Father planned. God the Holy Spirit executed. God the Son spoke. Let there be light. He is the word and there was light. Jesus will speak again when he returns to the Antichrist, the false prophet, and those people who took the mark, who were destroying the earth, he's going to speak and they're going to be stopped instantly by the word of his mouth and the brightness of his appearing at the end of the tribulation. Brothers and sisters, we need to be ready right now. If you're not 100% sure, 100% ready to know that you're ready to meet the Lord in the air, right now, don't stop praying. Don't stop wrestling with God until you know that you know that you know in your spirit, not in your head, not what somebody told me or told you. All these people say, you know, tell me if I'm saved. Nobody can tell you if you're saved. Only the Lord. Romans 8, 16. His spirit bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. Only God by his Holy Spirit, only God the Holy Spirit can tell you that you are saved. No one else can tell you that. You can go by the word of God but ultimately, ultimately, no one knows they're saved except by the Spirit of God witnessing to their heart. You need to wrestle with the Lord just like Jacob did right now until you know that you know that you know in your heart of hearts that you are saved and you're right with God and you're ready to meet the Lord in the air. You have got your oil and you are ready. You are a wise virgin. Don't stop until you know. Don't rest. Don't be the lazy, slothful servant. The Lord said, blessed is that servant when the master returns. This is Matthew chapter 25. When he finds him working. Don't be like the servant. Jesus said that when, the, when the, the servant thought the master would be delayed, he got all drunk. He got liquored up and started beating his fellow servants. And it says the, his master, Jesus said that his master returned at an hour he thought not. And it says that his master assigned him his place with the hypocrites. He went to hell, that servant. Read it in the Bible. You, those who are once saved, always say believers. Put your belief to the word of God. Open your eyes. Take off your rose-colored, doctrine-coated glasses and look at the word of God through childlike eyes. May the Lord give you eyes to see and an ear to hear what the Spirit says through the word of God and through his preachers. Right now, brothers and sisters, I'm thinking I have a song and I think you guys can hear it a little bit. I'm going to play this song. I want you guys to get a hold of the Lord. This is a prayer request for Church of the Firstborn. This is a prayer request for those. God wants to send a powerful move. The King of Glory wants to enter into His temple, into His people. He wants to send a final push to win and purify His bride, not through tribulation, because the Bible says we are not appointed unto wrath, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, but we are appointed unto obtain, obtain salvation through the King of Glory, the Lord himself, the Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord who will descend from heaven with a shout, with the trump of the archangel and the voice of God, with the voice of the archangel and the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first, and we are alive and remain. That's us, the purified bride, will be called up together with those dead in Christ to meet the Lord in the air. So shall we forever be with the Lord. I'm going to play this song. This is my prayer. I ask you to pray in agreement with me right now as I play this. It's a song called More Love, More Power, More of You in My Life. And this is the key.
The Bible says the Spirit of the Lord inhabits the praises of His people. You want to be baptized in the Holy Spirit? You want to get into sanctification and holiness? You want to be separated from this world? You're having all these struggles with addictions? Stop running from sin and run to the Lord Jesus Christ. Get a hold of Jesus. Get a hold of the hem of His garment. Get filled with His Holy Spirit. You, you want to be filled with His Holy Spirit? Worship Him. Worship Him in spirit and in truth. Don't worship Him in your flesh. Don't worship Him in your cardinal, ritual-minded uh, religion and your old dead denominational demonic foolishness. Get on your knees. Get out of your spirit of vanity and pride and arrogance and religion and get on your knees. Get on your face before the living God and give God all the honor and respect He's due. And stop giving honor and respect to man and religion and lying signs and wonders and give honor and glory to the Lord Jesus Christ. Stop following foolish, false teachers, uh, uh, exaggerated news, uh, uh, blow theaters on YouTube and get a hold of the one who can save you, the one who can deliver you, the one who can set you free. There's only one King of glory. There is only one Messiah. There's only one salvation. There's only one way. There's only one truth and there's only one life. And his name is the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, the Lord had also given me a vision the other day and I need to put it on here. I meant to do it. I saw the Lord's hand with a nail print in it and I saw it facing up like this. You know, his hands were held up to his side and the whole nail print was in his hand. And then it's like I zoomed and looked in that nail print, brothers and sisters, and I saw clouds. Below his hand was the earth. Down here was the earth. And the second heaven and the earth above his hand was the third heaven in heaven. And I saw the bride going, you know, the people being raptured going up through the hole in the Lord's hand. And then I heard a voice say, I am the way, the truth, and the life. The, hand, the, the way to heaven, the star gate, the opening, the window of heaven to get to heaven through the third heaven, it goes right through, right through the nail print in the Lord's hand. So I'm going to tell this video about vision of the rapture and all those people who are running to and fro shallow who are probably not even going because they're only interested in a date and they're not even worried about pleasing the Lord and being righteous and being holy and serving the Lord and being a, a sweet smelling savor in his nose. They're only worried about that getting out of here without serving the Lord. They won't get to this part of the video. They'll be, they'll be messaging me and saying, I thought you had a vision of the rapture, but you're talking about repentance. That's the vision. The way to heaven is through the nail prints in the Lord's hands. He is the one who paid the price for us. That's why he gets all the glory, all the praise, all the worship. He is the way the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except by me, the Lord Jesus Christ said. John 14, 6. I'm going to play this song. I hope that you guys can hear it. If not, the title of it is More Love, More Power, More of You in My Life. Let's listen, brothers and sisters. Listen. I want you to listen to this if you can hear it. Let's worship the Lord. Let's worship Him. Let's worship the Lord. Let's worship men. Let's worship the Lord. More love, more power, more of you in my life. Ask the Lord for more love for the lost and, you know, all those annoying people. Ask the Lord to give me more love for them. You need more of the Holy Spirit power, Holy Spirit power in your life to do His will. Yes, more love. More love and more power. This is by Jeremy Riddle. This is a version by him. Jeremy Riddle. I'm just going to pray right now. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Glory, glory. More love. More power, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. More of you in my life. Hallelujah, ask him. Ask him for more love, more power, more of him in your life. More power, hallelujah, give us more, Lord. 
more of you in my life. I will worship you. Worship him with all of my heart. With all of your heart. Worship him with all of my strength. and all of your mind, all of your strength. Hallelujah. Praise him. Praise him. Worship him. Yes, we worship him because he's our Lord, our master, our king of glory. You can find this on YouTube, Jeremy Riddle. More love, more power. Bless his name. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Ask him for more love. Ask him for more power. More power, more of you in my life. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. More love. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. More power. Glory to his name. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Praise be His name. Mighty is His name. Glorif glorify the Lord right now. Bless His name. Praise the Lord God Almighty. He is worthy of all praise. He is worthy. Worship Him with all of your heart. That's the secret. To get into the secret place. Psalm 91 verse 1. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High abides under the shadow of the Almighty. He who stays in prayer Right in the holy secret place. That's how you get into the secret place in the Most High. And abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, He is my God and my, He's my strength. You've got to be in that secret place in prayer. Bless His holy name. Hallelujah. I'm going to make try to make the other video, brothers and sisters, of reading all those names and giving a word from the Lord by His Spirit. Not by might or by power, but by His Spirit. Bless His holy name. Great is His name. Hallelujah. Let's go home, brothers and sisters. Listen, brothers and sisters. Time to go home. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. It's time to go home, brothers and sisters. It's time to meet the Lord in the air. It's time to get in those last souls. A mighty tsunami of revival, of glory. It's time to get in the get in the ark. It's time to compel those people to come in, go into highways and hedges, and say, "Hey, kingdom of heaven is at hand." Get in the ark. Seek the Lord while he may be found. The daylight is almost gone. Daylight's almost gone. Darkness is coming when no man can work. Hallelujah! Ask him to give you more love, more power, and more of him in your life. That you can run the race that God gave you. You're about to lose. See that no man take your crown, Paul said. You're about to lose your crown. Go finish the race. There's no crown for second place, Paul said. You've got to finish the race that God gave you to run. Don't let the enemy defeat you. Don't let your lazy flesh defeat you. Don't say, oh, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. No, go and do all that is in your heart from the Lord. Do and be what the Lord called you to do and be. Get at it. Get out there. 